hardest part was the back labor before I got the sterile water injections. The best part was getting the sterile water injections. And you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me want to try forever. And I feel so free. Oh, my sweet baby. Hey guys, I'm Jen. And I'm Chris. And this. Hi! Good job! <laughs> Malachi is six months old. And obviously, it's been half a year since he was born, but we wanted to take a second and tell you about the story of how he came into the world. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna put Malachi on a little play mat, and he's going to sit in his boppy and play with some of his Love Every toys. You do want that. There you go. There's Malachi. Love Every is great. It's a subscription toy box for infants and toddlers. And we've been getting boxes We've had three boxes now, and right now he's in the five and six months box, and he just loves playing with them. We pretty much haven't purchased any toys. And it's great because as they get older, the boxes come and with toys that are more developmentally appropriate. So right now he's got some fun things that are a lot more advanced than the early days when he just had his photo cards, yeah. which he still loves. So when they're really little, they come with things like um, photo cards, in black and white, he loves these cards. He loves to play with them. I don't know why, but he's staring at me right now. He wants it, so I'm gonna give it to him. Here you go. They're just so great to get started. They're they're all like natural materials, which I really like. A lot of wooden toys, very Montessori style toys. If you want to get started with Love Every, we have a affiliate code in the description and that will help support our channel and you can always pause the subscription or stop the subscription if you want to take a break but it's really fun to get one or two kits or all the kits <laughs> he's having fun right now with his toys yeah let me show you you having fun okay so let's get started let's talk about the birth story before we dive in i just want to tell you a little bit about my goals for birth because I spent a lot of time thinking about birth, listening to birth stories, reading about birth, listening to audiobooks about birth, a lot of time thinking and prepping and praying for a positive birth experience. So my goals for birth was first to have a really positive experience. I did not want to have a traumatic birth experience, which pretty much nobody's going to say that they want to have a traumatic birth experience. No. But a lot of times people maybe get so fixated in certain goals or ideas of how things are going to go and then they can get really derailed and I knew that that could happen so I was really hoping that I could adjust my expectations and kind of just go with the flow. But at the same time I really wanted a minimal intervention birth if possible so I was really preparing some like natural pain methods and that was just because I really wanted to experience all of it, 100%. Um, I wanted to feel it, I wanted to experience it, I wanted to be 100% in the moment. So going up to Malachi's birth, I had started to experience a lot of pre-labor symptoms in like the final weeks of pregnancy. So I think I was 38 weeks or so, um, th almost 39 weeks, and I started feeling like he was coming soon. I started just feeling things were changing. The biggest thing was just like the regular like aches and cramping that I was experiencing. That was about 38 to 39 weeks. And then 39 weeks came along and I had some real like labor, si early labor signs. So things like losing your mucus plug, and having more regular contractions. He had he dropped really low. I felt like he was coming. So the week before he came, that was like all week long. I kept thinking, he's coming, he's coming. And then <laughs> he didn't come. And I was so confused. I thought labor was coming any day now. And then it just felt like every day dragged on with the same symptoms and nothing happened. Yeah, come here. Okay. Hi. He's gonna be getting hungry too. So when his due date came around and he wasn't here yet, I was super discouraged, really disappointed, and kind of confused, which felt a little silly because all along I had prepared to go to 41 weeks, even 42 weeks, because I had heard, you know, that's common with a first time mom. But then as I got close and I kept experiencing like pre-labor symptoms, it threw my whole planning and preparation out the window and I was just so anxious to go into labor. I remember being really excited to go into labor. I wasn't scared or worried at all because I was just so 
I was so ready to meet you. So on his due date, that morning, I had what I would call my first real contraction. So it was like a minute long. I felt it like came on, I felt it go away, but then nothing. I remember texting my doula and being like, I think I'm having contractions. And she was like, oh, how far apart are they? How long are they? She thought maybe it was coming close. And then I kept texted her a little bit while later and was like, nope, nothing, they stopped. So I remember we went on a walk that Friday. We it was on, a due date on a Friday. We went on a lot of walks that week. We were walking a lot. And yeah. that was one of the things that definitely started contractions for me. We'd go on these long walks and then I would get home and have like contractions and think, okay, things are happening. And then it would stop. So, but this Friday, we went on a walk and I just remember thinking like, maybe this is our last walk before Malachi. And we said that a bunch of times, but that time specifically we said that and thought maybe, okay, well maybe here, he'll be here by this weekend. Cause I, I really didn't want to go back into work on Monday. That was my goal is like, okay, I just don't want to go back into work after I'm, you know, full term 40 weeks. I was just really hopeful he would be here and we could both, you know, be off. Friday, he was due on November 13th and after that long walk, we got home and I said to Chris, I'm having a contraction. I remember it was like 5.30 when I had the contraction, 5.30 p.m. And I was like, okay, this is a first, this is my first like real contraction this evening because I had one that morning. So I thought, okay, well, if I have another one in 15, 30 minutes, then I'll keep an eye on it. So I think 15 minutes later, sure enough, I had another contraction and they, they weren't really painful. They were just kind of like noticeable. So we decided let's go out to dinner. We didn't have any food in the house and we were really enjoying like going out and grabbing takeout. Um, this was during the pandemic. So we weren't able to like go eat in person very many places. And we got Mexican food, ordered a big burrito. We were sitting down and then I remember I had another contraction. And you know, it was like every 15 to 30 minutes I was having contractions. So on our way home, I started having a couple more contractions. It was about a 30 minute drive. And I think I had like three or four contractions. Got ready for bed, went to sleep, fell asleep. And then I woke up at midnight with a contraction and I couldn't sleep. So I just decided, okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to bounce in the yoga ball. I'm going to do some cleaning. I was just kind of feeling like antsy. So I went downstairs and then kept having them. They started being closer together, more like seven, eight minutes apart. It started being more noticeable and I didn't wake up Chris because I wanted him to sleep slash there's nothing to do. So <laughs> we would have just been sitting around, but I was, I was feeling really, really excited at this point. It was still, it was the day after his due date, so it was November 14th. And I would just alternate between like cleaning and bouncing on my yoga ball and taking a nap on the couch and watching YouTube videos, just like repeatedly doing those things over and over again. And this is when I started recording my labor and delivery video. It's almost 4 a.m. and I've been up since 12.30 with um, just inconsistent contractions, but they're starting to get more consistent about every six, seven minutes. I'm starting to get more tense, so I'm just trying to get up and get moving and get some stuff done so I can distract myself. Laid down in bed from like four to 5 a.m. So I laid down in bed and then that's, you woke up with me yep. around 6 a.m. Yeah. And I told you what had been happening. Yeah, and I was super excited. Like I've been waiting for the moment where I would wake up and she'd already been awake for a while, you know, because I had a yeah. feeling that that would indicate that something was actually progressing. And then it actually happened. I was coping completely fine, but I did notice that things were happening like pretty quick. When I woke up at 6 a.m., my contractions were three minutes apart and stayed that way. They weren't really intense though, so I kind of felt like, oh, I'm fine, like I'm just making this up. I, I kind of felt like it was all in my head a little bit, which sounds weird to say, but you just plan and prepare for it so much that when it actually happens, it feels very surreal. So I called the midwife's office at that point and told them what was happening, and she said, I think it's time for you to go to the hospital, you know, within the next hour. Well, I'll meet you there at 8.30. 7.45, I've been having contractions since um, like midnight regularly, semi-regularly. And now they're about uh, two to four minutes apart and getting a lot more intense. So we're gonna go um, into the hospital in about 20 minutes. I tested positive for the group B strep. And so I have to get antibiotics and you have to get that while you're in labor. So they wanna make sure that they have time to do that. Um, right now I'm coping pretty well. I using the yoga ball in the at the moment, but I've just been walking through all the contractions. 
um, a lot of them are in my back. So it's just this intense, like radiating, surging something in your back. But um, yeah, excited, nervous. Uh, I hope that when we get to the hospital that I am dilated, <laughs> at least something. I haven't been checked or anything, so I have no clue how far I've progressed. But um, we're gonna leave these, these little pups. Got the house all cleaned. Everything's ready to go. Farm animals are all ready to be taken care of. And uh, yeah, we'll head to the hospital soon. So, probably having a baby today. Maybe tomorrow. Hopefully today. Um, Hopeful November 14th is the day. We'll see. By the time we were getting in the car and going to the hospital, things were really picking up and I was in like labor land mode. I was like really in my zone when I'd have a contraction. The car ride was really rough. Uh, I just remember it being really hard to sit and not move. I remember that day too, you probably were distracted from it, but it was just a gorgeous day. Like I remember the drive-in was beautiful. It was after, well no, it was Saturday. So there was no rush hour traffic. It was just a really it smooth like ride into cool. the hospital. Yeah, it's cool, but like blue Saturday skies. Saturday morning. And then we got to the hospital and you know, COVID was happening. So we had to like check in with masks and get passes and things like that. And I remember the walk to the labor and delivery unit was tough because I would have contractions and I would like stand against the wall. I have one in the elevator. I was just having them a lot, like every two, two minutes at this point. But the thing about my contractions is they started getting really intense in my back and they never really went away. So when I was having back labor, it was kind of constant, which was really hard to time things because the back labor never really faded. It was always there. We got to the um, labor and delivery ward. We checked in to triage and they came in and checked me and they said I was, was I six centimeters? It was six, almost seven. So when I checked in, I hadn't been checked in, I don't think I had been checked in weeks. Cause I had, I had been checked once when I went to the ER for like a little scare. Yeah. But I hadn't been checked in weeks. So I had no idea what I would be in. So I was almost seven centimeters. So it was pretty progressed. Which is really exciting. We were like, I don't think I, I don't think either of us expected that to actually be the case. No, we had heard so many so stories about yeah. people being in like in labor and they get to the hospital and they're like two centimeters. So I expected to be like three, maybe yeah. four, you know, five would be great, but then I was almost seven and that was really exciting. Yeah. But I was starting to be in a lot of pain and Chris was helping me a lot with um counter pressure in my yep. back so like putting a lot of pressure into my back to try to distract me from the pain that I was feeling. I had to get on antibiotics because I was GBS positive which is group B strep. So I decided I wanted to get on am antibiotics and that was kind of like the <laughs> So they gave me the antibiotics and I had to stay in bed for I don't know like 30 minutes while the antibiotics ran. And that was really hard because yeah. I was in a lot of back pain. That's the last place you wanted to labor was in bed. Yeah, I didn't want to be in bed, but I had to, to get the IV, IV antibiotics. And I told them, I said, asked for information and asked to get um, sterile water injections because I had heard that those are really helpful for back labor and I was having really intense back labor. So sterile water injections is exactly what it sounds like. It's sterile water injected in like different points in your back. It's kind of, it's kind of like acupuncture where they're targeting certain like nerve endings to try to trick your body to not notice where the pain is. And I had heard amazing things about it and I was like, okay, I want to give it a shot. It's not any sort of medication. The only downside is it's really painful when they do the injections, but it's like a very short lasting pain. So I was hoping like short lasting pain for reduced pain and I can really like cope with the contractions. So I think it took like 30 minutes for them to get set up with that. And I was, yeah. that was the hardest 30 minutes, I think, um, was when I was laboring, having the back labor, probably in tr maybe in early stages of transition, still had hours to go. So they came in and did the sterile water injections, oh. which hurt so badly. It was really, really intense, but then it was over. And immediately it was like so much better. I think because I was experiencing such intense pain from the back labor, 
experiencing normal contractions felt like a breeze because yeah. of what I had just experienced. I remember your demeanor changed so much. You oh, were it was so much more relaxed. able to converse with us. Everything just seemed. I started you know, laughing, more laughing yeah, and exactly. talking, and um, that's when we got into the tub. So I got into the tub, and the tub had jets, which was great. It was just a hospital hospital tub. I should add, we were in just a general hospital setting and they had jets and so when I would have a contraction I would turn the jets on every time I had a contraction and that was just my way of like mentally kind of distracting myself from the contraction and it like provided like a stimulation to my abdomen while I was having a contraction that was really really nice. At the same time Chris would pour like take like a cup of water and like pour it over my belly and that was also like a really nice way of distracting my body, distracting my mind. I was just gonna say, and it, that was, it was at that time that is when our doula showed up too. Our doula came um, right about that time. The hospitals were allowing doulas in the area, which was really nice. And she brought like little lights and we started playing music. We started playing worship music. We had made a playlist not that long before of worship music that I loved and wanted to labor to. So we had the lights off, little candle lights, and we had my labor music playing. And I was just in the tub. It was like so nice. I did not want to get out. It was I could um, empty it and refill it. Basically, as it was getting colder, colder, we would just add more hot water. And so I just stayed in this tub, laboring, um, listening to music, talking in the zone with the jets on. It was it was really nice. I was so relaxed. I was almost like sleeping sometimes. Yeah, didn't we think? Didn't we come to the conclusion that it was around like from like 10 a.m. to close to one that you were in the tub for? Yeah, it was like 10, no, it was like 10 to 12. Was it 10 to 12? Okay. Something like that, but I had no idea what time it was. Yeah. And it was dark in there, so I literally had no idea how long I was in there. The only thing I knew was that probably about two hours later, I started getting back labor again and, <laughs> asked, <laughs> and asked to get another dose of the sterile water injections. And at that point, they said, oh, we do it every two and a half hours, so I had to wait a little bit. So right about the two and a half hour mark, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get out, get more sterile water injections, then I'm gonna get right back in the tub for more laboring. So I got out and they said, let's go ahead and check you first just to see where you're at because I was starting to feel like this, I was starting to like push, basically. I knew something was happening because I wasn't doing anything, it was just like an involuntary response and I just kind of let it happen. So I said, okay, I, I do kind of feel like I have to. So they put me on the bed and they checked me and that's when she said I was almost 10 centimeters and like he was right there, it's a zero station, is that what they're looking for? She said he was right there and my water bag was like bursting. So it was like about to, I was, my water was about to break, he was right there, I was almost 10 centimeters, so it was actually start time to start pushing. And in that hospital, and in other hospitals in the area, you, you can't push in the tub. They don't allow like water birth, which is kind of a bummer because I think that would have actually probably been really nice. I'm sure you would like love the more. I love the tub. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that has got to go do something. So we're going to talk, just the two of us. Okay, Malachi? So it was 12.30 at the time, almost 1 o'clock. And I was starting to involuntarily push. And the back labor was starting to get really intense. So I wanted to, like, lay down. Like, I just wanted to sleep. I was getting really tired just because I hadn't really slept the night before. And I just, I wanted to just, like, lay down, like, on my side. So I was trying all the different options and none of them were working for me. I tried on my knees and I was really uncomfortable because of my back kind of, I wanted some pressure into my back. So I tried that and then I just got really tired and nothing was happening. So then I tried my side um, and it was really hurting my hips. There was something about the way that my body was that it was just really hurting my hips. So then I tried the squatting bar, which is like a bar that you hold on to and that really hurt my hips. Um, I think like the, something about the way my hips are and the way that position was, it was just too much for my body. So then I ended up on my back, which was like the last place I thought it would be, but that's just where I was most comfortable because between contractions I could rest on my side and kind of sleep and close my eyes and try to relax. And then when a contraction came on, I could turn over to my back and push. It took a long time. I was there for hours um, pushing. There was times where the contractions started spacing themselves apart and the team was a little bit not worried or anything, but they wanted things to keep moving along. So at one point they were like, well, maybe we should start you on Pitocin. And I I decided, no, I just want to wait and see what happens. I think my body is just taking its time. So I kept letting my body push. They were doing some coached pushing where they were trying to tell me to push 
for a certain number of seconds um, a certain number of times but what I was really learning was that my body wasn't going to push the way that it needed to unless it was doing it on its own so anytime I tried anytime I tried to push it wasn't as effective or um, I couldn't even do it the right way but when my body was in like an automated response mode it was way more effective so I was just letting it do its thing even if it was slow and steady I was just kind of trusting my body and I just I pretended sometimes like I was pushing when they told me to or I like tried to push when they told me to but for the most part I just knew my body was gonna do its thing and was gonna push him out when he was ready to come out he was in the right position they checked his position um, and his head was actually he was crowning for like hours he was just I mean he's got a really round head so I think the shape of his head was just really hard to come out and that makes sense now looking at him he's just got a really round head I think he's like 90 plus percentile and it's there's a lot of uh, surface area here to cover <laughs> a couple hours went by just continuing to push continuing to lay on my side continuing to rest between contractions he never had any like heart uh, accelerations or decelerations he was perfectly happy they were checking him regularly between contractions with a um, Doppler and he was perfectly fine. Around 3.30 is when he came. So there was really no indication that he was about to come. I was so ready to be done. I was like, this, this has got to end soon. I don't know how he's gonna come out. It had been so many hours at that point. I passed the baby. I was so tired. I felt like my body was pushing so hard and I just, it felt like he was going no, getting nowhere because his head was just like there. I could feel his head, I could see his head, but it wasn't coming out. And then, was it 340 that he was born? Yeah, 342 I think. 342, I pushed and just like, just like popped out <laughs> at that point. Um, what are you doing with me? <laughs> <laughs> And it was like the most relief. I felt so relieved that he was out. And I think more than, I know a lot of people have like really emotional responses to their babies being born and they're just crying, um, like so in love with their baby. I was just so happy to be done pushing. But it was really nice to, you know, have him on my chest and just be like, he's here, it's done. I feel like I did it. Like I was so proud of myself to have delivered him um, unmedicated, to have done it to have trusted my body to do it, to have like coped through everything. I was just like amazed that my body was able to do that. But he was, he was totally fine. He came out screaming and very, you know, cute, alert, just little snuggle. The next part was something that I, I wasn't prepared for. Um, and I, I had heard people talk about, but I wasn't prepared for this and how this would go. It was probably the hardest part of my entire labor and delivery experience and that was the stitching afterwards it provided me with like a um, local anesthetic so I was like numbed but it was a lot of pressure and I was so tired and my body was so sore and I just wanted to just lay there I just wanted to lay there relax I wanted to eat I wanted to hang out with my new baby boy mm -hmm. and the stitching took so long I thought, you know, it was going to be quick, but it was like over an hour of stitching and that was because of how I tore. Um, it was a second degree tear, which is pretty common, but it was like in different directions and in different weird spots and so they had to do a lot of stitching, I guess, and it was, it required an OB to come in to help with that and I'm not surprised again because I pushed for a really long time and he's got a big head and my mom <laughs> tore, my sister tore, I think it was just going to happen. And he was little. He was only six pounds, 15 ounces, 19 and a half inches long. Um, so not a big baby, but a big head. Hardest part was the back labor before I got the sterile water injections and the stitching. The best part was getting the sterile water injections and getting in the <laughs> tub. I loved being in the tub. I definitely would do it again, 100%. I really liked my birth team. They were very supportive. Uh, they were singing along to the worship music. They were like very calm. Everybody who was a part of my birth said it was like a wonderful birth to be a part of. My doula was great. She took pictures and videos. It was a very positive birth experience. I really couldn't have asked for a more positive birth experience. And I really needed that because we ended up having a really rough nursing journey, which I've talked about in another video. 
I mean, we're just really grateful. Absolutely. That he's here, that he's healthy. And, you know, nursing didn't go the way I planned, and that was really hard. But so many other things are so amazing <laughs> with his story that um, I'm really grateful for it. He's such a blast to hang out with. <laughs> he's such a blast. He's such a sweet little guy. He's glad to be here in this world. And I hope that if you guys are pregnant, if you are planning, I hope that your birth is beautiful and positive, regardless of which direction it takes you in. If you had a really hard birth, birth journey, I hope that you can find healing in that. And I just wanna encourage you that sometimes, you know, like our nursing journey did not go as planned, but there's, there still can be a lot of beauty and redemption in, in the process of healing through that, so. Say bye. Boo. Oh. <laughs> bye. <laughs>